Able to take Ray Borg, just 22. Justin Scoggins, also born in the 90s, he's 23. Scoggins is three inches taller. That matches his advantage in reach, 66 to 63 inches. All right, now to get us started with the official introductions, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record, 10 wins, two losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Fighting out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, Justin Scoggins. And now introducing his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist, only professional record, nine wins, one loss. He stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Ray, the Taz Mexican Devil, Borg. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb D. Thank you very much, Vanessa Hansen. Justin Scoggins trying to vault into the rankings tonight. If he can spring the upset against the minus 280 favorite, Ray Borg. Scoggins, the southpaw in the white trunks, immediately takes the center of the octagon. Ray Borg is in the black. Now, Scoggins has a three-inch reach advantage, but he multiplies that with his stance. He fights very long. And that was just arm reach. It's not taking into account the reach of the legs. And Scott is very active with his right leg at keeping his distance. That's the real question of this fight. Can Ray Borg close the distance? And he does immediately in first double leg takedown and finishes it. And Scoggins uses that overhook very well to get back to his feet. Good early sign for Justin Scoggins. And when you want to watch excellent technique, in all facets of MMA, this weight division consistently highlights it, and these two guys are going to show a lot of high-level technique in every facet, on the ground, striking, and in between in the wrestling arena. Scott has told me this week I have the best movement out of anybody in this division. He says he'll actually do sparring rounds with just two guys can only use one technique. That's how he feels he perfects certain techniques. A lot of the unorthodox kicks that you see from his karate style, he's perfected by only using that strike per round. But Train's very intelligent. We'll do a lot of sparring where you can't even touch him in the head. Ray Borg has largely dominated his last three UFC victims. Gian Herrera certainly put up a good fight last August, but Ray Borg has just been a monster dating to his UFC debut. Skaga's doing a really nice job. He's going to make Borg work for these. Excellent defense from Justin Skaga. He didn't want to be in the clinch, but he's doing well so far. Unofficially, two takedowns landed for Ray Borg, but hasn't done anything with them. Now, so far, the real fight has been head position. You see Scoggins is really emphasizing where his head is. If your head is underneath your opponent, you will not be taken down. Nice left hand there from Scoggins as he exits the clinch. Yeah, right through the guard of Ray Borg. Activity. Yep, activity, baby. Balance. 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 Head control. Left elbows right here. Slash him. Slash it. Yep. Hard. Yes. 45 there. Great start for South Carolina's Justin Scoggins. That was Cody Freeland in his corner. Scoggins spent some time at American Top Team there in Coconut Creek, Florida. Now back home. And will be rooting hard for his Carolina Panthers tomorrow. Right now, though, off to a strong start against the near 3-1 to favorite Ray Borg. You can hear his coaches tell him to slash him. They wanted him to rip an elbow from inside the clinch. But the rest of the lingo you're hearing from that corner is all code because both these guys speak the same language. You don't want to tell your opponent what you have coming. So you hear a lot of coaches now coding their advice to their fighters. Borg is really struggling to close the range. And Scott just lands another nice left hand to the body. Borg has got... Borg has got to start faking and fainting, creating some angles. It's too easy to time his entries. And Scoggins is either tagging him or immediately clenching him. A very nice kick to the head. You see a lot of that traditional karate style from Justin Scoggins, but gives you so many different looks. Good entry for Borg, but he had to shoot from very far away because Scoggins in his southpaw stance fights exceptionally long. 
Now when Scoggin switches and he fights out of his yeah, right-handed stance, he's a little bit more of a Muay Thai style. He's easier to get close to from this stance. Now is when Ray Borg should try to get close. And Borg's nose has already been busted up. You see Justin Scoggins outlanding Borg at a near three to one clip. No, if you're fighting a guy like Justin Scoggins, I gotta imagine not that easy finding a guy who can simulate what he does. It's not. You know, I asked Borg about that specifically. Since they've got a couple of guys that, that have his style in the gym. So he was sparring specific rounds of Scoggins style, but the thing is that's unique. If you aren't Justin Scoggins, it's not the same. Because Scoggins has developed his right leg so that when he stands in both different stances, it's two completely different styles. He's very much like Stephen Thompson who's going to fight in our main event. In fact, he yeah. grew up training with Stephen Thompson for the bulk of his career. It wasn't until recently that he left that jab. Borg unable to get in on the leg there unofficially. One of four is Ray Borg on his takedown attempts. Borg is frustrated right now. He hasn't had to deal with this in the octagon. This is going to be very telling to see what adjustments Ray Borg can make in between rounds. Because so far, not so good. Scoggins again to the body with great effect. Beautiful spinning attack there. The diversity is just exceptional. You never know what's coming from this kid. When you're fainting, you're doing that bow and arrow. If you throw the left hand a couple times in the pipe, it's gonna start landing. He's worried about the body because you're hurting him, huh? Okay, he hit you with anything. Mm -mm. All right. Really what are you hitting him with? Everything. Everything, right? What's keeping you safe? Distance. And movement. Okay. Yep. Your movement's too good for him, man. Too good for anybody here. So listen, move, bow and arrow, set up. He's, he's gonna. Good. He's gonna. Fuck it. He's gonna go to moving backwards. Make sure you're setting up. Let's get him this round. Let's go, Ray. Let's go, Ray. 